All right, we've been talking about uh, delta x and delta y, or change in x and change in y. And remember, the delta is a little triangle symbol, right? that, uh, that Greek letter. Change in x, change in y. Or as we travel from one point to another, how does our x-coordinate change? That's our left-right position. And how does our y-coordinate change? That's our up-down position. So as I'm moving from one point to another, how am I moving left-right? How am I moving up-down? Keeping in mind, just as a reminder, if I'm traveling, say, you know, from one of these points to the next, I'm at no point traveling directly up or directly down or directly left or right. I'm not moving up and over and up and over and up and over. I am moving along this diagonal, but as I move, my position is getting higher and higher up and further and further to the right. So, delta x is how far did I move left, right, going from one position to another. Delta y, that's how far did I move up or down. And we're going to talk about a specific application for this change in x and change in y, and that application is called slope. Of course, I know you've heard of slope before, and I want you to forget that I said slope for right now. So, um, think about it. as we're traveling along this line right here, our change in x and our change in y, as we move from one point to the next, we're hopping from one point to the next, our change in x and change in y isn't random, and actually there's a pattern to it. So from the first point to the second point, our change in x was one, we went one space to the right, and our change in y is two, we went up two spaces. And then to the next one, again, our change in x is one space to the right, or positive one, and our change in y is one space up, that's a, a or I'm sorry, two spaces up, that's a positive two. And it repeats, right one, up two, right one, up two. Right one up two. Okay. So there's this there's this one two pattern, and we can see that if we mark down what all the coordinates are for the points in a little table. So we've got the point zero zero, one two, two four, three six, four eight, and five ten. Those are all the points. And as we go from one to the next, you see the y coordinates are going up by two. So our change in y from one point to the next, you can see it in the table, is two every time. And our change in x, and you can see this by looking at the, the points when we put them in this table form, you can see that the change in x is up 1 every time. It's always the same. It's not a coincidence. That's just how it works when we're traveling in a straight line. Um, and what we want to do is we want to represent that, that relationship or that pattern. Um, you know, so we want to represent that somehow mathematically. And one of the easiest things to do would be to think of it as like um, a ratio. So I could say... If the ratio of uh, you know change in y to change in x is two to one, or you know if it went the other way around, change in x to change in y, one to two, I could say that for every one unit we move forward, we move two spaces up, or I could say for every two spaces we move up, we move one unit forward. All those things would be true. There's lots of different ways to talk about this relationship between our change in x and our change in y. And so what we kind of settle on as mathematicians is to write our, our, this relationship as a, as a ratio represented specifically as a fraction. I know we all hate fractions. Okay? And that fraction is delta y over delta x. So the ratio of change in y to change in x. And we can see here that every single time we move, it's plus 2 on the y side. Okay. So that is change in y is 2. And it is plus 1 on the x side. So our change in x is 1. And we could simplify this, by the way, to just 2. And we would call that slope. Why is this a really great, useful way to do it? Because I can arrive at this, this determination of the relationship in many, many different ways. So I looked at the table and I just went from one to the next. But what if I don't pick two points that are you know, right next to each other? And by the way, I do want to clear up, there are lots of points on this line that we aren't even talking about. There's no such thing as two points on the line that are right next to each other. 
right, there's all sorts of points in the middle. I'm just talking about the points that I've selected because they have whole number coordinates. I mean, for example, there's a point right here that's x coordinate of 1 half right, and a y coordinate of 1. But we could pick any two points on this line and use those two points to figure out that calculation. So for example, I'll just take the table here right, and let's simplify it by removing a bunch of, uh, right, let's just do uh, say the point one, two, and the point 510. So if I jump straight from 1, 2 to 510, so I'm taking a big leap from 1, 2 to 510. And I'll look at my, what's my change in Y and my change in X? My change in Y was plus 8, and my change in X was plus 4, which we talked about how to calculate this, 10 minus 2, 5 minus 1. So then I write it out as a fraction, change in Y over change in X, and it is... 8 over 4, but that simplifies to 2, same as we got before. All right, so we can, if we write it as a fraction like this, it easily, no matter which two points we pick, it, it, simpl it simplifies to 2. In fact, we could even go backwards. What if I go from 4, 8 down to 2, 4? Right, I'm going down the line, it says, so now my changes are all negative. So let's take a look back. Y, I'm going from, uh, I'm going to go from 4, 8 to uh, um, 2, 4. Okay. So here, my change in Y, I'm going from 4, 8 to 2, 4. My change in Y is down 4. It's a negative. And my change in X is down 2. All right. So then, do my calculation. Change in Y divided by change in X is negative 4 over negative 2. And those two negatives cancel each other out. And I just end up with 4 over 2, which is, again, 2. So we use change in X and change in Y on the line um, to come up with this idea of slope uh, because there is a relationship as we're traveling along the line, there's a relationship to our, our horizontal and vertical change or movement. And that relationship is the same if I take small steps, if I take big steps, if I go backwards. It doesn't matter which two points I pick. Anywhere I travel on this line, there'll be that same relationship, which we can represent as the number 2, which we calculate from change in y divided by change in x. Right? And that is slope derived from delta y and delta x. Change in y, change in x.